Hello and welcome back to our full IT office networking. Today we are going to do part 5. And this is going to go under the IT fundamental course. If you go there, if you want to be kind of like, you know, want to take everything with a sequence where you're new to IT and you want to learn things in a sequential way, then this course will be the best one. And everything that I'm teaching in the lab environment is free. All of this stuff, you can just directly take it from this page by clicking on it without even registering. So all this content that I'm providing is just to make sure that you do not invest any money in IT if this is not your career. So you need to come here and watch these videos and then decide later on that if you really want to go for the live training or for the membership where you want to then become that person. So today we are going to continue our part five in our lab series. So part one is this one. I assume that you have watched all parts before watching this part because it won't make sense for me to jump into something right away it won't make sense to you actually so that's why i prefer you watch part one part two part three part four and then part five will make super sense to you so this is where a lot of people will get a clear idea of what that first position is going to be it's going to look like this entry level it help the specialist even they even they put specialist in there they're putting entry level in there this is just a naming, like I say, a lot of people will name it different ways. But once they put entry level, they're expecting a person with basic computer knowledge here. A person who knows how to do operating system troubleshooting stuff. A person who knows how to support Office 365 and Office basic applications in that company. A person who knows how to diagnose utilities. This is the stuff that we teach you then. This is the stuff that we assume that you will learn inside the you know the the universities but they don't teach you this stuff the way we teach you because a lot of that stuff is theoretical and even though in the bottom they say you either need to have a school diploma or equivalent of one year of experience and that is what when we teach you you're kind of almost about six months of person who's working and directly in a company because the way we teach you this real world skills a lot of people just don't teach this stuff and then here they're clearly saying that A plus is preferred, but not required. So this is where if you have A plus, great. But what if you have A plus and a courses that we're teaching? Help the support technician, Active Directory user management, Office 365, everything that looks good on your resume. Not only look good on your resume, but when you start applying for these jobs and you land a job, just like in this position, then what happens next? You really need to perform that. So the HR people talk to the system administrators and hey what kind of person you're looking for we're looking for this type of person so they came here they put it on indeed.com you applied you got the job so today in this part system administrator will today add this uh help this person in the account so in the server so uh, i mean you have have you ever wonder when you started a job what how did you get your account so this is what the system administrator is doing today okay in this company so let's just do that in this lab we're just adding you because you got hired congratulations so we're gonna go here to the active directory that you have built in part four we're gonna go to active directory users and computers and here we are going to basically add you as a help desk because help desk is a IT person so that help desk should have more power than just normal users of course they can really dig in deep in there and refine their access to the help desk but Let's say this company, they don't care about that. Help this is almost the same. Uh, he has almost the same access like a sysadmin, but he's just not doing his job, right? He's, he doesn't have the ability to do that. So he's going to right click here and click on new and click on user. Now, if you're wondering, I just directly came to Active Directory without explaining too much about Active Directory. So this is where you need to take our courses, either live training or you need to go to JobSquare Share and take Active Directory user support technician course. Sorry, users. Active Directory user management course. It's a full course. We have invested a lot of time and energy on it. So either, either you t take that or you take a live training, just like I'm training you right now in this lab. That's how we train you live. So here we're just going to name help this help this, right? So I'm just going to make it simple. This is like your name help this. Okay. And we're going to create a username. This is the username that you need to log in to other computers. Usually in a company, they will put like a, for other users, they will put like a username, uh, user should change the password at next logon. So meaning if I give access to this help desk, and if I check this next time he logs into his machine, it's going to force him to change the password. I'm not going to do that right now. 
So we just created a help desk account and still this help desk doesn't have uh, that rights that he can be an IT person yet because this is a normal access. So you're going to right click on it and go to properties and that's how we change access in Active Directory. It's a normal domain users. We are going to add this help desk person to domain admins. Of course, like I said, there are other levels that people can lower it, higher it. It's really up to the company, but normally this is how it is. So here we added the help desk now as a domain controller user, the help desk account is ready. Now I can go to any machine in this network. I can add something in, in this network. Like let's say for example, I can add a computer to this switch and that computer needs to be joined to the, the domain just like what we did. So I'm gonna show you that later on in other video, but that help desk can then log into that machine and start managing other computers. Got it. So this is how the help desk uh, account is actually added, and then uh, the the he will go in there and start managing other machine uh, users. But and another uh, thing about sysadmin also, the boss told the sysadmin that can you also put some kind of group policy. So this is not something like it's too related to this video, but just to show you that a sysadmin job is also over here in group policy management type of thing. Where uh, let's say for example. The boss says that I want everybody uh, to uh, have at least eight characters of password in their, um, you know, password. So if it's less, then it shouldn't accept it. So this is the stuff that it happens from group policy. So the the, the sys administrator will come here, and he's going to go to the group policy, and then he's going to go to the basically the, the the computer policies, and then he's going to open this Windows settings, and in Windows settings he's going to go to security, and then here account policies over here password policy and you see that the password uh you know uh, stuff is right here so as soon, like for example um you can if the if the boss says that i wanted eight characters they can come here and change this to eight and then next time if somebody uh logs into that computer that help this person logs into that computer and he's changing his password for the first time he it will not accept seven it will accept eight this is where you force that stuff so this is the stuff also we teach in your help this uh, live training in very detail and where you need to understand about group policy stuff too at basic level so of course it this is just to kind of like show you that what this is the system administrator are doing so just to kind of give you a little bit touch in this but this is it you know of course after this there's so much that sysadmin can do applications there are new technologies now uh, cloud type of things you know and we work on very very different type of things and that's where if you really want to become a sysadmin after the help desk to, uh, after you working in help desk for at least six months then you can come and say i want to become a sysadmin that you were talking about and then we can give you a custom training on this side too we can give you a custom training on networking also we can give you a custom training on cloud stuff also but you really need to have at least a basic level of uh, you know help the skills at least six months or you should be working in a company uh you know uh for for a year or two to to cut to contact us to say i want a custom training that is that is where we are going to give you training other than that we won't be doing that because it's too much energy that, you know, on our side and we know it's not going to be a good thing for you as well you don't want to waste money thank you for watching this video i'll see you in part six